these are blanks. Uh, this happens to be an Anvil brand blank, um, which is just a standard one inch 12. People are familiar with Rainers. That's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, Anvil brand comes just a, a basic bench shape. Um, ideally, you'd hand make them. Um, you know, the forged piece of steel, they come out just slightly harder, but not too hard. Um, and you can forge in a nice shape into the shoe as you build it. But uh, I shoe too many. Mm -hmm. uh, just shoe too many. That's just way too many. And elbows start to hurt. So this gives me a good compromise. I can cut a heel into it if I need to. Um, but I can punch my own nail holes. Um, I literally can wear these down to nothing. Mm -hmm. There'll be nails left in the foot um, because my stamps are, are punched a little bit deeper um, than, a, than a plate you would buy. Mm -hmm. um, this is just a different kind of plate. It's called a narrow toe. Um, it's cut out of, um, I think it's water cut, plasma cut. We had it done locally here, machine. Um, horse that goes to the ground really hard and needs a little more control. Um, obviously just a specialized plate, but something kind of fun to look at, something to think about. Um, I guess the main, the main point is that, you know, it all starts with balance and um, creating a nice foot and shoeing a symmetrical shoe on an unsymmetrical foot. Um, because if you, you have asymmetrical sliders or asymmetrical feet, they're going to sink into the ground differently. Um, you're going to cause some uh, asymmetrical movement. Um, you know, I believe we have, a, you know, there's a, we have a lot of control over how horses move, and uh, and I think that that really keeps horses sound. Is if they're moving comfortably and moving cleanly, that's going to keep them sound. You talk. You made one comment uh, that I found interesting, and. Uh, the gentleman that was there mentioned it was a little bit like ice skating. That you have yeah. to be aware of the edges that these uh, that the horses need, uh, that that reining horses need. Maybe you can kind of go into the go into what you were talking about there. Yeah, when I went to the Futurity, like I said, a lot of horses had a hard time slipping in their hind ends, mm -hmm. um, and so they'll slip out. They'll you know they'll, they'll slip out a lead then, or fall out a lead for you know two strides, three strides. Once they hit three strides, they, they zero. Um, so. You know, when we shoe these, um, you'll see we'll, we'll shoe with kind of a, a safe edge, um, but we still have a pretty good crisp edge on that. Um, and also, we do need, that's why we need the hole in the foot, especially on the hind foot. So when that horse is doing circles and that foot is sinking into the ground, they can have some traction. A lot of times we, we can just shoe to the slide and to the stop, but we have to remember that the horse is also turning around and doing circles. So. Um, you know, having a good edge on the shoe, not a sharp edge where they step on themselves, they cut themselves. Um, but they do need some edge, they do need some, uh, you know, a hole in the foot here. We can't just cover it with a plate and go ask them to go stop. Um, and by controlling that that track traction, so to speak, or that dump of that dirt, we can help kind of guide that slide and help that horse slide, um, especially on ones that want to splatter. And also, we, you know, we're helping the horse do circles. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned um, when we were talking, one of the things that you talked about, and we don't have a horse here so we can't really show it, yeah. but you talked about that when you put the plate on, you want the plate to, you're lining up the plate with the direction of travel of the foot, not That's with exactly the direction right. of travel of the leg, I guess. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, maybe you want to explain a little about that. Yeah, it's uh, something Neil Miller taught me and uh, a few people that know him know he does a lot of rainers, um, and we adjust this quite often. But like I said, we have a lot of shoe to work with, so we can easily cover our foot. Um, inside the shoe, but I literally can put the shoe on sideways and still cover my whole foot because I have so much stock here in length to work with. So, you know, especially if you have a horse that wants to splatter a lot, I don't believe in adding traction devices um, because you're only shoeing to one element. Um, if you put a traction device on the horse, like a rudder or something of that sort, those seem to be popular. When that horse tries to stick a foot to do a turnaround, that ankle's going to stick. Uh, and that's not fair to the horse. So, literally by just controlling the the heel of the slider, you know, in line with the pastern, um, I can put that shoe in line with the travel of slide. So if my horse is real cow hocked, some of our cutters tend to be real cow hocked, I can twist this shoe, fill that inside toe so they're not rolling off their inside toe. It keeps that inside more balanced on the ground so they're not sinking that inside into the ground. And that's when they want to push to the outside. Obviously, every horse is a little different, but that'll help direction our slide. And we're helping the horse stop straighter. Um, it puts a lot of strain on the horses when they're splattering and the trainers asking them to slide even farther well, when they're splattering out wide that's going to put a lot of stifle pressure a lot of pressure on their hocks and then that horse is having to hold it in I want a horse to go to the ground and slide like we ski downhill comfortably we don't necessarily have to squeeze our thighs together to keep those skis together but if our skis are pointed to the outside like our feet do 
you know, if we go down the hill with our skis pointed outside, which direction are the skis going to want to go? They're going to want to go outside and spread our legs apart. I, that's kind of the theory I kind of look at when I shoe the rainer is uh, a skier, a skier on the slopes. <laughs> so.